With Tesla's GigaCasting invention, which uses massive projecting machines to create single pieces of vehicle bodies, the auto industry is seeing a major revolution. Still, repairing these hideous single-piece sections if a Tesla car equipped with GigaCasting components is involved in an accident causes great difficulty. Fixing a GigaCast part after an impact is a focused and complex system that regularly demands professional equipment and methods. First, one should appreciate GigaCasting's range. Wielding together several smaller parts in the traditional automobile build shapes the design of a car. Tesla's GigaCasting technique accelerates this cycle by producing larger, single-piece castings. Therefore, reducing parts, simplifying gathering, and working on underlying honesty. Given this change, damage to these sizable cast pieces following a crash could be more difficult to repair by hand compared with frequent multi-part events. Starting with a careful evaluation of the problem, the approach of repairing a Tesla car with GigaCast parts damaged follows. This requires both visual investigations and sophisticated diagnostic tools like 3D scanners and computerized eliminating systems to definitely identify the impacted areas and the degree of the damage. GigaCast components are basic for the development of the vehicle. So, any damage should be totally investigated to make sure that repairs restore the special strength and welfare of the vehicle. In February of this year, the French automotive industry issued a warning about the risks of Giga Press technology. They argued that the process was dangerous and should be outlawed. They also expressed concern that the use of Giga castings could have significant environmental and financial consequences for consumers particularly if they were unrepairable. Gigacasting is the only way to make an electric car structurally rigid and lightweight while also significantly improving crash strength. However, some argue that it is a nightmare. Tesla should never have done it, but there have been some changes in the industry, such as Huawei's ability to produce an EV in 67 seconds thanks to the world's largest gigacasting machine, as well as changes from 12 different automakers. The use of gigacasting machines has significant implications for what happens after a car crashes. Critics argue that gigacasting should not be used because it damages the structural parts of a car after a crash. However, this is not the case. The Tesla model and gigacast repairs, yeah, repairs, you can repair a gigacast part, they have improved significantly a few years ago. Any collision damage to a gigafactory part would mean you have to replace the entire. No, actually, that's not even true either, guys. You don't replace the entire car if a gigacasting part was damaged in the crash. You can replace that entire gigacast element. It's not a write-off. If you're smart, you come along and you can just buy the gigacast parts straight from Tesla. They're not actually that expensive either. The exact pricing of the gigacast part was around about something like $25,000. It wasn't very much for what is an enormous piece of cast metal. Anyhow, a few years ago, Tesla was obviously an innovator, and it was criticized heavily by the entire automotive media. Not the entire, but you know, 90% of them. Many people who liked or didn't like Tesla also said it was a joke, it was a terrible idea. If it ever were going to work, everyone else would have been doing it for the last 50 years. That's what I heard them say. If it was going to work, Toyota would have already been doing it. That's one thing people say. Anyhow, since Tesla innovated this part, you know, Toyota has now said it's a great idea. And they said it's engineering genius when they actually stripped apart a Tesla Model Y. That's not a made-up story, by the way, that's actually a direct quote from Toyota engineers. Since then, we now know that many manufacturers are having ordered G Gigacast machines from Edra, which is the manufacturer of those machines and they're based in Italy. But there is also a Chinese supply as well now. Anyhow, what is the Gigacasting part? Well, using a large casting machine, automakers can now assemble a vehicle's outer body using only two or three parts, and that reduces lots of things failure rate. Normally, those parts would represent 100 to 150 separate part plants that are all stamped together, wielded together, glued together, molded together. Whatever it may be, it reduces. You know, 100 to 150 parts down to two or three, depending on the car. Some people say maybe one day, one, so it seems to be a huge advantage that reduces the weight, but increases the strength of the car at the same time significantly. 
It also increases the torsional rigidity, which is something you feel when a car is more torsionally rigid when you're turning it. And it actually feels like the car handles better now. If you think that's not relevant, why is a company like Toyota taking cars and saying, oh, the 2024 model, it's an improvement over last year because we added 108 more spot welds to the car. If this wasn't something that manufacturers saw as necessary, they wouldn't continually be doing things like that every single year. We hear those kinds of claims, particularly when they take like a non-performance car, then they make a performance version out of it, the same car, oh, we added another 68 spat welds to one part of the car and another 74 to another part. Well, yeah, you can see why they're doing that, because there's so many spots and so many worlds that can have a little bit of flex, but gig casting removes all of that, which is really an incredibly good thing. And because of this, Tesla was able to drastically lower the cost of manufacturing and improve the production of efficiency of the Model Y. But also, people are often curious to know why a Tesla Model Y weighs only 1,900 kilograms or around 4,300 to 4,200 pounds. Why is it lighter than equivalent electric cars or cars that are significantly smaller than the Model Y? It's lighter than them. That's one of the reasons people had understandable concerns about what happens when a Tesla, particularly a Model Y, is in a collision replacement PLS which they said would be impossible. The cars would be total. What a waste. So what can happen is that for many segments of the gig car, small 50 millimeter cracks can simply be welded up. Other areas can be welded up to 30 millimeters as long as a backing plate is put behind them for support. Fix professionals can as often as necessary apply techniques similar to those used in conventional bodywork for minor injuries such as surface abnormalities or minor bruises. This can compromise surface restoration or paintless impression fixing as well as filter application. Given the larger and more essentially basic character of GigaCast components, even apparently minor damage may occasionally require additional interference to guarantee that the presentation and security of the vehicle are not compromised. More major damage can result in an unquestionably more complex remedy approach. Should a GigaCast part be broken or show serious underlying damage, it may need total substitution on occasion. Replacing these sections on account of their size and complexity is anything but a straightforward task. The car should be painstakingly disassembled to remove the ruin projecting, possibly including disengaging, different associated frameworks and parts. The new section, which is usually a large portion of the vehicle's body, should then be suitably changed and reattached using professional tools and techniques to guarantee that the main body of the car is entirely rebuilt. So what do you think? Does Tesla gigacasting really get fixed after crash? Do share your views in the comment section below. If you enjoyed watching the video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel.